Our third speaker, Tessa Smith, is a science graduate with honours from Monash and Deakin Universities. She's a plant, insect and rock lover who will always walk slowly because there is something interesting to look at. Tessa. Hi, everyone. Um, hi, I'm Tess, and today I'm going to talk about filing. <laughs> uh, no, seriously. This talk is about the inventor of the greatest filing system ever invented, the Lane Taxonomic System. A bold personality who worked tirelessly in pursuit of biological knowledge, Linnaeus is one of the few big names that hasn't been covered already in a laboratory, laboratory speaker, and I'm pleased to be able to present some of information about him to you today. Carl Linnaeus was born in 1707 at Stenbroholt in southern Sweden. When his father, Nils, attended university, he chose the name Linnaeus as his last name, as at that time uh, Swedish peasants had no last name. And this was based on the linden tree, which grows throughout Europe. Now, my own sister, Linden, is also named after this same tree. Um, and young Carl, later in his scientific career, he would end up describing the linden tree scientifically. As a young child, Carl had a strong interest in names. His exasperated father, Niels, who was a Lutheran pastor, who would work in the garden with young Carl, said that he wouldn't be told any more names until he remembered what they are. After completing secondary school, his teacher, teachers believed that Linnaeus was not intelligent enough to actually attend university, as botany wasn't a proper subject, um, like Greek mathematics or theology, which he didn't excel in. After several years of extra tutoring in anatomy and physiology, Linnaeus was finally considered ready for university. In 1727, Linnaeus started at the University of Lund to study medicine and he later transferred to the University of Uppsala. Learning about plants was a key part of the medicine course as doctors were required to create their own medicines. After only two years at university at the age of 23, Linnaeus was given the role of lecturer in botany as he knew more about plants than the already existing professors in botany. During his studies and as a lecturer in botany, Carl traveled to Lapland and central Sweden on collecting trips to observe and catalogue new plants. He was described as a man who needed to see things for himself and couldn't rely on the opinions of others. He also sent plants, he's also sent plants from all over the world, but refused to travel himself as he thought he wouldn't like the tropics because they were too hot. 19 of his students over his career, um, including one Daniel Solander, who traveled with Captain Cook, made voyages of exploration, um, but unfortunately, a lot of them died on the journey. As a lecturer, Carl organized field excursions around Uppsala for up to hundreds of his students at a time. They would go out to the countryside, collecting plants, animals, and minerals, and return home in a parade, some playing trumpets, some banging uh, drums, and singing. And this procession was called Flora's army. In order to complete his medical degree, Linnaeus was required to finish his course outside of Sweden. So in 1735, Carl Linnaeus moved to the Netherlands, where he published a system of ranking and classifying organisms that we use today, i.e. the ordered ranks of taxa into class, order, family, genus, and species. Furthermore, the system of binomial nomenclature, i.e. homo sapiens, is probably Linnaeus's best known work and his greatest contribution to science. The idea of nomenclature had arisen from shorthand um, he'd used while out in the field on a field trip when they were cataloging what type of plants cattle ate. It, um, it was one of the simplest systems that had been suggested at the time, although there were some other people who suggested different theories. The system was not immediately successful with any of his with all of his colleagues, and he received a letter from one of them which said, my dear friend, we that admire you are much concerned that you should perplex the delightful science of botany with changing names that have been well received and adding new names quite unknown to us. 
Thus, botany, which was a pleasant study and attainable by most men, is now become, by alterations and new names, the study of a man's life. And now none but real professors can pretend to attain it. The class mammalia, to which Homo sapiens belongs, was named after the mammary glands which express milk to nursing young. It was named in order to encourage women to nurse their own babies, just like animals did. Because at that time, it was common among women, especially of the upper classes, to give their babies to wet nurses. But Linnaeus and others argued that this was bad for the children and that this was contributing to the high child mortality rate of the period. Linnaeus's taxonomic system was published in his best known work, Systema Naturae, or the System of Nature. Before the binomial system was proposed, the species Abutrus unido, or the strawberry tree, was known officially as Abutrus with upright stems, hairless soft toothed leaves, and many seeded berries, which is a bit of a mouthful. In his study of plants, Linnaeus looked at the number and arrangement of reproductive parts of plants to determine where to classify them. In his descriptions, he drew some interesting parallels between the plants and human relationships. Um, he wrote, the, the flower's leaves serve as bridal beds which the creator has so gloriously arranged, adorned with such noble bed curtains and perfumed with so many soft scents that the bridegroom and his bride might there celebrate their nuptials with so much the greater solemnity. <laughs> it's just very over the top, isn't it? And he also tried to apply the sexual system of plants and animals to geology and soils and suggested that soils represented the female being and salts represented the male being. And when they were united in matrimony, that that was how minerals were produced. <laughs> um, in 1739, Linnaeus married Sarah Elizabeth, a doctor's daughter. The couple had five children who reached adulthood, including four daughters. Linnaeus encouraged his family to take up botany and translated a lot of his work from Latin into S Swedish so that the women of his family who weren't allowed to go to university at the time could actually read it. And he helped his eldest daughter to publish a paper on her own. By 1742, Linnaeus had become a professor in botany. In Philosophia Botanica from 1751, uh, Linnaeus writes, if you do not know the names of things, the knowledge of them is lost too. Now, I, f I reckon this quote is not too dissimilar from one from Professor Dumbledore who says, always use the proper name for things. Fear of the name increases fear of the thing itself. <laughs> the use of a correct name may have many implications and one modern example of this is in the conservation science is the recognition of two rather than nine subspecies of tigers, which creates a larger genetic pool for which they can breed more of this endangered species. It is also a sad thing though that today, an undescribed species that doesn't have a binomial name is more likely to become extinct than it is to become described scientifically. The great scientific achievements of Linnaeus's classification system sit next to other works which are no longer considered valid. As much of his inquiring mind could achieve, Linnaeus was still a product of his time. The idea that science and religion were not compatible would never occur to Linnaeus, who was raised by very religious parents, and he would be a strong believer all his life. To him, species were similar in form because they derived from the same parental pair created by God at the beginning of the world. He believed that new species were simply hybrids of others. Unbeknownst to him, his writings would contribute to the Darwin-Wallace theory of evolution that would be proposed over 100 years later. As well as other animal and plant species, Systema Nutriae included descriptions of the five varieties of humans, four of which were the Americanus, Europeanus, Asiaticus, and Africanus. Perhaps to highlight exactly how outrageous these classifications of humans were is a fifth variety, Monstrostos, which includes bearded women, conjoined twins, dwarves, hermaphrodites, as well as centaurs, fauns, sphinx, and the phoenix. <laughs> if you ask me, I think I'd prefer to be included in the last group. <laughs> Linnaeus built up an impressive herbarium over the years, and purpose-built a museum in his home in Hammerby to store all the material. 
He was paranoid about wildfires destroying the material, and so he built the museum so it did not contain a fireplace. Um, now, this would have been impossibly cold to work in, as this part of Sweden in winter uh, has an average temperature that's often below minus five. He was still an enthusiastic teacher in his later years, and Linnaeus often received his students at home while wearing only a nightgown and nightcap because nature does not wait for powder and wigs. Now, I haven't looked at my deacon teaching contract, but I'm sure wearing pants is probably on there somewhere. <laughs> for his contributions to botany and Sweden, Linnaeus was ennobled by the king in 1761. Being very proud of his work, Linnaeus could have given Muhammad Ali, Kanye West, or Donald Trump a run for their money, which is illustrated here when he writes that in three years, he had written more, discovered more, and made a greater reform to botany than anyone before had done in an entire lifetime. <laughs> it is then fitting that in 1959, Linnaeus was designated as the type specimen for Homo sapiens, as in he is the one person that you would have to go back and refer to if you wanted to get any information about what humans were like. Um, that was in 1959 when he was described by Professor William Stern. Linnaeus described thousands of plants and animals during his career and has been called the father of taxonomy. And today, is one of the very few people outside of mathematics and physics that can be instantly recognised by a single letter, L. Thank you. <laughs>